from my lips by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Amen. So guess what? Your flesh got to get crucified. Yes. You got to get dead, dead, dead. If you want fast, he going to put you on a fast. Hmm. He might make you sick. Allow affliction to rest upon you. Because why? You're too busy. You're too busy on your phone. You don't have time to pray. But guess what? You know how to pray when pain lick you. So sometimes God got to lick you. If when he's speaking to your spirit, you don't listen. Amen? Amen? Verse 6. Therefore you shall keep the commandments of the Lord your God to walk in his ways and to fear him. For the Lord your God is bringing you into a land, a good land, a land of brooks of water, of fountains and springs that flow out of the valleys and hills, a land of wheat and barley, of vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of olive oil and honey, a land which you will eat bread without scarcity, in which you will lack nothing. A land whose stones are iron, and out of those whose hills you can dig copper. When you have eaten and are full, then you shall bless the Lord your God for the good land which he has given you. So you got to have lack before you have provision. But in all, give thanks. Amen? Amen. Verse 11. Beware! That you do not forget the Lord your God by not keeping his commandments, his judgments, and his statutes which I command you today. Lest when you have eaten and are full, and have built beautiful houses and dwell in them, and when your herds and your flocks multiply, and your silver and gold are multiplied, and all that you have is multiplied. When your heart is lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, from the house of bondage. When God bless you, don't you forget him. Don't you forget him. When you had no job, you was fasting, you was praying, you was troubling the throne. God provide the overflow. You work, you work, you work, you work. And your prayer life go down, 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 down. You might send tithes. You might. But some people, when the money is enough, they're on the first flight out. Private charter, maybe even. Mm -hmm. They're on the first ship out. But let the money go. You're back to prayer. You're back to trouble in the throne. Don't forget the hand that blesses you. Amen. Verse 15, who led you through the great and terrible wilderness in which were fiery serpents, not just ordinary serpents, fiery serpents and scorpions, and thirsty land where there was no water, who brought water for you out of the flinty rock, who fed you in the wilderness with manna, which your fathers did not know, that he might humble you and that he might test you to do good in the end. Then you will say in your heart, my power and the might of my hand have gained me this belt. Oh, that's my business. That's my customers. Where's God? Do you remember him when your heart has lifted up? Do you remember who else heart lifted up? Lucifer. And you know his fate. Verse 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore to your fathers as it is this day. Then it shall be, if you by any means forget the Lord your God, and follow other gods, and serve them, and worship them, I testify against you this day that you shall surely perish. As the nations which the Lord destroys before you, so shall you perish, because you will not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. 
How can you hear God if you always work? How can you hear God if you always busy? How can you hear God if you're always on social media? How can you hear the warnings? See the devil, he might set you up. He might give you a deal you cannot resist. Send you to a faraway land. All you gotta do is this. It's something but a compromise. It's just something to turn your heart away from the man. The God that bless you. What is your price? I know about you, but Jesus paid it all for me. If I had a billion dollars in the bank, you wouldn't know the difference. Because I still can shop at Ross. <laughs> I still can shop at Walmart. Yeah, I, I can still pack my own bin and rent and drive my own u haul Let's give God the highest praise. For the overflow that he's going to release to his servants. servants. What prolongs your wilderness experience? Number one, complaining. Numbers 11 and 1 says, Now when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, for the Lord heard it, and his anger was aroused. Complaining. But I was only saying complaining. Provokes God to wrath. Did y'all know that? If you want to complain, go lay before the altar. Trouble the trouble. Philippians 2 and 14 says, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. God tell you, let your light shine before men. What you complain about the wickedness of the wicked for if you know they're wicked? You should be rowing yourself for trusting in them. Allow them to come under your bosom. Where you have to serve and go on. Because you can't hear God's voice. Unbelief. Doubt. James 1 and 6 says, but when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because he who doubts is like a wave of the sea. Blown and tossed by the wind, that person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. What else can cause you a prolonged experience in the wilderness? Fear and discouragement. In Numbers chapter 13, Moses sent 12 spies to check out the promised land. And the report was that yes, the promised land is theirs, flowing with milk and honey. Oh, it's so good. But the giants make us look like grasshoppers. David couldn't have been David without Goliath, you know. David couldn't have been David. He couldn't have been King David. Without Goliath, he would have still been tending sheep. What you scared for? Hmm? When you're in the world, you wasn't scared of no police. I fight my own mother before, and she dislocated my jaw. And she didn't let me go to the hospital. You know where she carried me? To church. I was a horrible child. I might as well tell you. Some of the things she don't find out till I go on this pulpit and go and say, tell the people. Like, but they go, oh, Hey, Jesus. So people of God, this ain't the time to be scared. Fear could cost you your life. 
fair could cause you your promised land. Listening to people and not hearkening to the voice of the King of Glory. My God caused them a whole 40 years in the wilderness. Just going in circles. They went close enough to see the promised land, you know. They confirm it. But fail caused them to do this. Backtrack. And God said, that unbelieving generation will never step foot in their promised land. You see what you do? Your fear and discouragement of course. You. My God. Just like telling your friends what you plan on doing. You don't ever tell nobody nothing. Move in silence. Because your sister, your brethren from a long time, you think they got your back? You know what's amazing? Some people who come up with you have a problem with where you are. Because why? We come up together. Never mind the fact that they ain't give their life to the Lord, you know. Never mind the fact that they ain't on God run, you know. Never mind the fact that they don't fast and pray, you know. You still supposed to be where they is. Says who? Not the God I serve. My God tell me to prosper and be in good health. Only two things now I'm in the hospital. Disobedience to God and God trying me. I ain't gonna say demonic attack. You know why? Because the only way it would work is if I disobedient to God. I will never give man no witch, no wall of that credit. Give God the highest praise. For those of you who are experiencing battle fatigue, you've been in the furnace of affliction for so long. Hear the word of the Lord. In 2 Samuel 3 and 1, now there was a long war between the house of Saul and the house of David. But David grew stronger and stronger, and the house of Saul grew weaker and weaker. David was favored by King Saul. Saul was the king, you know. David was the shepherd. He was nobody. He was the stone the pillars rejected. Someone say, but God. But God. Someone say, but God. But God. But God. So understand, for you to get to your promised land, you got to go through the wilderness. You got to go through the process of you being summoned by the king. Right? For you, the nobody, to play a harp and chase an evil spirit that the Lord allowed to be on the king. See, God will set you up for you to be favored by your future enemy. You know what is an honor to be summoned by the king? Someone say, but God. But God. So understand, the process to the kingdom is a painful one. Attack after attack. And even when God show you the ugliness of people's heart, and they summon, and God say, you got to go. But he just tried to kill me. I say, go. I got you. Now are you getting that duck? What you say? I say duck. He showed a spare. So God would allow you to be in your enemy's face. Attack after attack. They call in the check upon you. They summoning you to the kingdom because they want to see why the witchcraft ain't like. What they do wrong. Because everyone they use the cauldron on dead. I must get the potion wrong. Too much rosemary. What you think? 
Touching. More sage? <laughs> More incense? <laughs> Touching. What King Balak do? I can do seven more altars. I can double up on it. That wasn't enough. I can trip on it. This one ain't ashamed me. Someone say, but God. <laughs> Isaiah 40 and 29 says, He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. And young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, someone say those who hope in the Lord. Because you know hope is the word for this month, the foundation, right? But those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. Someone say, but God. God. See, so you gotta look like the enemy winning. Yes. See, in order for you to get stronger and stronger in Christ, your spirit gotta be strong. And your flesh gotta hurt. Come on. Break that. It gotta be broken. You gotta be depressed. You gotta be suicidal. Come on. And guess what? You almost there. Yeah. You almost there. Because you gotta minister to someone else who's suicidal. How can you preach it if you haven't lived it? Someone say, but God. Choose your battles carefully. What David do? He inquired of the Lord. First Samuel 30 and 8 says, So David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, Pursue, for you shall surely overtake them and recover them all. Recover all. Don't fight nobody else but only the ones ordained by God. All of us know, all of us are old enough to know but the difference between right and wrong. Yes. 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 By now, all of us know there's a heaven and a hell. Yes. There are actions and there are consequences. So some people, you got to leave behind. Yes. If they don't go and run, yes. don't get too much. Yes. Time to wake up people. You gotta stop feeling sorry for Jonah. Because Jonah gotta stop running. Yes. Jonah's affliction was from disobedience to God. Be very careful who you feel sorry for in this season. Hey. Be very careful of the Jonas who always got a sad story. You ask them how they do. Uh, I gotta go. You ain't dropping that on me. Because you know me. And you know how I go. When you ready for the Lord, he ready for you. Even if you want to find me, you can find me somewhere. But follow me as I follow Christ. I'm not dealing with disobedience no more. I'm not dealing with stiff men, uncircumcised Philistines anymore. God said, come from among them and come from among them, I shall do. I will not be in the line of fire. No friendly fire can hit me. I ain't catching nobody bullet. You have to want God. Everybody want to go to heaven. I know y'all asking, I'm going to rebuke y'all tonight, you know. What y'all know about my for that? Huh? <laughs> Everybody will go to heaven, but nobody will serve God. Will God. Everybody will go to hand. Blessings, miracles, favor. But they won't serve him in public. They won't trouble the throne. They won't stop cussing. They won't stop drinking. They won't stop snotting. But they won't bless him. 
hypocrisy. And then you talk about the people in the church. Mind you, the church got demons too now. Yeah, hypocrisy it. everywhere. But that is no excuse for you not to have a relationship with the one true living God. Because at the end of the day, you're going to end up in the same hell as the crooked pastor. It's only one hell, you know. Only two drops on the, on the trolley. Two stops. Ain't no, ain't no in between. That's it. Who the elevator can say, up or down? <laughs> Amen? Amen. So you are the choir of the Lord. Proverbs 20 and 18 says, plans are established by counsel. Not your mind, not your heart, not what you feel like doing. Go before the Lord. And stop coming to him as a last resort when things fail. Plans are established by counsel, but wise counsel wage war. God will teach you how to fight. He will teach you how to warfare. That's right. By a show of hands, how many of you pray in the night? I talk about after midnight. Raise your hands. And we got some warriors in the house. Okay, okay, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's during the night. You wage warfare, and you will slew. And I say slew. Some mighty giants. These are not physical giants here. These are spiritual giants. And if you think you can go up against them in your flesh, they'll slaughter you. They'll mush you. Ah. Amen. So seek the Lord in all that you do. And lean not to your own understanding. Understand every giant is a strong man. Word of God say, buy of the strong man. Are you exercising your rights? Binding, loosing, and spoiling? Are you doing it? You are to strip them or spoil them of their weapons, their armor, their rank, and their walls of protection. This was a strategy that I learned in warfare one night. Man, I... This one week in particular, this demon was tormenting me. I have never realized you can see a repeat demon in a dream. That, don't, that didn't never happen to me before. There's one particular, and I will not call his name because I'm not going to give him any reference. No power. This one demon troubled me. When he used to run in the house in the hallway, the whole house used to shake. He used to run to come and hide me. I get a hear and feel him coming. And I tried to get up, but I don't get high. I said, what the heck? He ain't even reached yet. <laughs> but one night, because I pray and I release the Holy Ghost fire, and I do all I, I, I know what to do. But there's one night I was frustrated. God said, strip off his armor. Those simple words. And I did it. And then I released the Holy Ghost fire. And then... He was defeated. It's the little nuggets that God gave you in the night that will prove you to be victorious. It's the little nuggets in the night. One word, one name, one instruction could stop a whole, listen, a whole generation of warfare. All you need is the name of the strong man. All you need is the name of the demon. And when you get the name, you seek counsel. What do I do now? Ah, Jesus. Psalm 89 and 40 says, you have, 89 and 40 says, you have broken down all his hedges. You have brought his strongholds to ruin. Isaiah 45 and 1 says, thus says the Lord to his anointed, to Cyrus, whose right hand I have held to subdue nations before him, and to loose the armor of kings, to open before him the double doors, so the gates will not be shut. You can't just run up on a strong man. You gotta bind him up so he can't attack you. You gotta take authority over him. 
a damn good autonomy. You can't wrestle with him. Now, bind them up for us. Tear down their strongholds. Strip off their armor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let's give God the highest praise, people. Let us give God the highest praise. So fail. Discouragement will not be your portion in your journey to the promised land. And know that if you are a soldier, if you are indeed a soldier in the army of the Lord, you must pray for the spirit of holiness. Acts 4 and 29 says, Now look, now Lord, look on their threats and grant to your servants that which all boldness they may speak your word by stretching out your hand to heal and that the signs and wonders may be done through the name of your holy servant, Jesus Christ. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And they spoke the word of God with boldness. You can't be scared. You can't be timid. You can't be intimidated by the sight of no demon. Daniel 11 and 32 says, The people who know their God shall be strong and carry out great exploits. Isaiah 41 and 10 says, Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. And in closing, I leave with you Jeremiah 29 and verse 11. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a future and a hope. There's hope, people. Don't mind the wilderness experience. Don't mind the threatening of Goliath. He thought he was big and bad. But it took one stone in the right spot. David prophesied to his Goliath. I urge you to prophesy to your Goliath. Prophesy to your strong man. Prophesy to your mountain. And have the victory in the mighty name of Jesus. Receive the word of the Lord.